Yeah? We do it with that, with that background. Cycling the Arctic is an incredible experience, but if you get caught up in bad weather... Hi, my name's Matthew. What am I doing? I don't know. I'm just going to keep cycling. It's not fun. So knowing what to bring, what clothing to wear, is absolutely essential. Just like being able to fly a drone correctly. Welcome to the Arctic. The Arctic Circle is just here. We're in beautiful Norway and we're traveling up the Norwegian Atlantic coast. And in this video, I am going to explain to you what clothing you require to be able to survive this incredible environment. So right now it is the middle of May and it's about seven or eight degrees. It's quite chilly. And even in the peak of summer, the weather here on the Arctic can vary from being extremely warm, up to 30 degrees Celsius, to zero degrees Celsius, or even in worst case scenarios, a little bit below that. Well, the rain is coming down pretty hard now. For close to 40 meters above sea level, I, it, I don't even know how cold it is right now. I am absolutely freezing. So what you require is, well, quite a lot of gear. But for most people who are bikepacking with a minimum bikepacking setup, that is quite difficult to bring everything you need. So what we're going to explain is the absolute minimum what you need. And then in addition to that, what we recommend as extra if you have the space. Rule number one when cycling, it's all about layers. Each layer you add, adds a pocket of warmth in between as there is air trapped. And this is really, really an efficient way to keep yourself warm. You can take layers off, take layers back on again, and it can regulate your body temperature as you cycle. There are many different types of base layers you can get. Some are polyester, some are wool, and there are advantages and disadvantages to each of them. This one is a polyester, it's quite a thin one, so it's based for, for summer. Uh, on the warm days, it'll absorb the sweat, it'll regulate your body temperature. It's very, very comfortable to wear extremely comfortable, but the downside is with polyester is it tends to smell quite quickly. Bacteria gets into the material, so you may need to wash this more regularly. Well, we're nearly at the top. It was a tough climb back up, but it's got a tailwind, which is nice. This is also polyester, but it's a little bit thicker, as you can see, a little bit warmer. Once again, it's a very comfortable fit, nice tight fit on the body. It's kind of the perfect base layer but once again, it tends to smell quite quickly. So another base layer, this time merino wool. Wool can be a little bit itchy, so it can be quite uncomfortable, but the technology now, merino wool style tops are so unbelievably comfortable. Once again, it's a tight fit. It will absorb the sweat, but at the same time, it'll keep you warm. So if you're descending down off a mountain and you've been sweating climbing up, you will not get that chill factor running down your back. And so the best thing of all is it's natural antibacterial. So you can wear this for several days without it really smelling too much. What can I say? This is what most Norwegians wear when going off doing outdoor activities in Norway. The downside to merino wool is obviously the price. It is quite expensive, but just to put it into perspective, a lot of the clothing I've bought is well over five. Some of the clothing I have is over 10 years. It lasts so, so long. So layer number two, I have my base layer underneath and then I have a cycling jersey as a second layer. So if it's not too cold, if it's 15 degrees or so, this is the perfect two items to wear. I've got pockets in the back of these. This one's a long sleeve one, of course, you can wear short or long sleeve jerseys. And this is base layer number two. Now, if you're not really into wearing Lycra and cycling gear, then of course you can just put on a normal top over this. But I would recommend something that can absorb sweat, something that is going to keep you warm. So let's look at the other options. This is a Merino long sleeve top. It's got a zip down here so you can add a little bit of air to it if you want to and zip it up when it gets a bit cooler. It's the perfect sort of top to wear as a second, second layer. Um, it doesn't smell, it regulates your body temperature well, it absorbs sweat once again and keeps it away from your body. And 
overall it's very very comfortable and as you can see it's it's a reasonably tight fit but still plenty of room you don't want anything that's going to be kind of get flapping in the wind when it comes to clothing and cycling so if you're not in, don't want to wear lycra you don't want to wear cycling gear something like this is perfect you can wear this for hiking you can wear this for skiing you can wear this for cycling okay so what i have now i have my base layer my second layer and now a third layer which is which is wool as well once the temperatures get below five degrees really i need three layers for sure on and then in addition to this i will add some sort of waterproof jacket on top of this probably quite thin but windproof and extremely waterproof are essential so let's look at that I am wearing a cycling top here. It's a long sleeve one. It's polyester. It has built in waterproofness to it. It's also wind resistant. It's quite windy right now, but you don't feel it whatsoever wearing this. And it's reasonably warm. It has a nice little nylon interior part here, which adds a bit of extra warmth. As you can see, it's quite tight fit. Now I understand there's a lot of people that don't want to be wearing these sort of uh, cycling tight fit clothing. So let's look at the other options. Now you could have this as layer number three if it's not too cold, but on a day like this, where it's, it's gonna be around five degrees, four layers, this is absolutely perfect. This is fully windproof and waterproof. It's Gore-Tex material. Um, has a zip so you can let some air in here which is important what it is missing is zips under the arm i highly recommend that you have something where you can access air here it also has a pocket in the front here so i can fit food or i can fit my phone in which is very very handy so look at something that has pockets that can be a real benefit but with this four layer system i am pretty damn good for whatever temperature hits me here in the arctic during the warmer months of may to september and also a hood, not essential, but handy to have as well. So depending on the weather, if it's around 12 degrees or maybe a little bit higher, then I always have on cycling gloves. These are so, so important. Even if you're not a cyclist, it's so important to have these because you're gonna have so much vibration from the road all the time, which is very difficult for your hands to handle, especially if you're cycling every day. So having this kind of padding in the gloves will take away some of that vibration. But also if for some reason that you come off your bike, the chances are the first thing that's gonna hit the ground will be your hands. And this is gonna protect your hands from any scratching or any injury. So cycling gloves are for me an absolute must. Okay, the biggest mistake I have made cycling in the Arctic was gloves. This is really, really important. It can get to zero degrees, even in July, going over a mountain pass. And if you bring the wrong type of gloves, your hands are going to start to get cold very, very quickly and could be to the stage where you can't squeeze the brakes, you can't change gears, can't even hold the handlebars correctly. That is a nightmare scenario to be in. So bringing the right gloves is essential. Now, if you're carrying a lot of gear with you, you can bring two sets of gloves. Bring a kind of summer set, which will maybe be okay for between say eight and 12 degrees, something like that. And then bring something that can handle five down to zero degrees. So what I have on right now is what is like a standard winter, winter set of gloves. These will go down to comfort level around zero degrees Celsius. And no matter whatever I experience now, even if it goes a little bit below zero, these will be able to handle it to the point where I'll still be able to operate my fingers and be able to get through that area. So for the lower body, I go with two sets of bib shorts. I have a thermal set, which is these right now, they're based for winter. These are very good all the way down to zero degrees. And then I'll have a summer set, which will be perfect for anything above say 10 to 12 degrees Celsius. Absolutely essential as well, leg warmers. A pair of leg warmers you probably wearing these for anything below 10 degrees or especially anything below five degrees now one thing i want to mention is why i think bib shorts are so important a lot of people won't want to wear bib shorts and i understand that but the tight fitting the fact that these are very waterproof 
and even if they do get very wet they dry so quickly that no matter what happens now it's just starting to rain I know it's going to rain today I don't have to change any sort of clothing I just keep these on at all times and they'll keep my legs warm no matter how much it rains and as I mentioned they will dry so so quickly so I feel that bib shorts are so important when cycling up the Atlantic coast what I recommend is maybe a pair of mountain bike shorts uh, or a pair of hiking shorts, something that can absorb sweat, something that is good for physical activity. Um, but so, so important is that you need that chamois, that underlayer where you can protect your bum from hours and hours and hours of cycling. So these are taken from a mountain uh, bike pair of shorts. They're not the sexiest things in the world. I'm not going to put them on, don't worry. But this is perfect to, to wear underneath a pair of your shorts that you may wear. Now, if it gets cold, then I recommend maybe wearing a full uh, hiking pair of pants. The problem is, is that you need to make sure that they're reasonably tight at the bottom because they can easily get connect with the chain or the drivetrain, get dirt on them. They could be flapping about a little bit. So you need to maybe focus on finding a pair that are specific for cycling. The problem with having something like this is it's a lot of stopping and starting, putting them on. So you get them on, okay, you start cycling and then guess what? It stops raining and you also get very warm in a sort of pair of pants like this. You need to try to find something that is breathable. These, for example, have an area which you can open up a little bit, uh, but you will get warm very quickly. So it's always kind of like stopping and starting, taking them off again, putting your shoes back on, etc. I'm not a fan of this and that's why I like to wear just bib shorts and have them on all day without any hassle. When it comes to footwear, personally I like to have cycling shoes so I have cleats here. You'll see with the cleats as well that they go into the sole so it's easy for me to walk about. I can even kind of like climb up a, well not climb up a mountain but you know I can do some walks in these which is, which is nice. I find clipping in is a lot better for cycling. You activate more of your muscles, you generate more power in the legs, and just overall it makes, I find, it makes cycling easier. When it starts to get cold, you need to be able to layer up. And you don't layer up from the inside. So from the inside, I will have a normal pair of socks for on warm days and then for cooler days, like today, I've got a pair of merino wool socks. What we do to keep ourselves extra warm is we layer up from the outside. So, option number one, if it's not raining much, um, it's mainly dry but very, very cold, I'll put what, this is kind of like an outer sock over my shoe. These just keep your feet nice and warm, keep your toes nice and warm to around maybe say five degrees. Once you start getting below five degrees, then you either need to have something, an extra layer on top of this, or just to have a thicker layer in general. All right, so it's gone below five degrees. What I've got now is I've got two outer layers on. I've got a waterproof layer. I've got a thick sock layer. Then I have my shoes and then I have my merino wool socks. And this should keep my toes reasonably comfortable down to at least zero degrees. Your toes will get cold at times if it's down to zero degrees. It's just a fact of cycling. But with having the right system here, layering up from the outside, you should be all good. So it's uh, now below five degrees. It is getting very, very cold. And you've also got the wind chill factor. You need to protect your ears for, for sure. So I find just a simple like beanie hat like this. This is a sports one. Um, it's just perfect. It'll keep my head warm going down to zero degrees. It's very light and easy to carry. And it's an essential part if you're going up to the Arctic. Hopefully you won't need to use it. It'll be nice and warm all the time. But when it gets cold, you've got to keep them ears nice and warm. So I'm off the bike now. And the first thing which is so important is to make sure you've got dry, warm clothing to put on. So I may carry, for example, a pair of hiking pants 
um, with some long johns, wool, merino wool long johns underneath, which I'll put on. And then I will have a some sort of warm top. So once again, this is a merino wool warm top. And if I need another one, then maybe I'll take one of the outer layers that I've had on the bike and put that on over the top of this. And then really important, just having a warm coat to put on. I'll never ever wear this on the bike itself or unless it was extremely cold, like, but having this afterwards is really, really important to put on. And then you're just keeping yourself warm straight away after the bike ride. So guys, I'm in the Arctic right now. It is around zero degrees. It's kind of snowing and raining a little bit. I've got really good gloves on. We've got four nice solid layers on with wool and I've got a nice waterproof and windproof jacket on. Ears are nice and warm, feet are nice and warm. I am just ready to rock it basically. It's, you have the right gear on, you can handle anything.